All right, well, if I may, I'm going to make a short little video here about, uh, about carbide lamps. I don't know if you can see that super well there. We'll see if we get Universal Lamp Company. Made in the USA, and uh, I do not know the exact year that this one was manufactured. Um, this is an Autolite carbide miner's lamp, or caver's lamp, or um, whatever else you might want to call it. These are uh, not too hard to find on eBay, and that's where I picked this one up. Um, these have intrigued me for a while. I collect some lamps and ladders and stuff like that. And uh, got this one in uh, not a whole lot worse condition than this than I see it now. I cleaned it up some, and uh, and I got her functioning here. So thought it'd be fun to uh, show everybody how this works. Particularly the person I'm going to see sending this one to as a gift. Uh, thought they might like it. Anyways. Um, basic function of these are, and this little hole is, um, this top part here is a reservoir for water. This bottom part is where calcium carbide is placed. This is a rather large chunk. I got a few of these, but, um, and when calcium carbide is mixed with H2O water, um, the resulting, uh, Reaction produces acetylene gas that when mixed with oxygen is uh, nicely flammable and burns with a very nice uh, light white, uh, white light and is uh, a nice readily available light source when you're in a cave somewhere. Uh, another advantage is that since it doesn't use batteries, this uh, Calcium carbide is uh, a lot lighter than batteries, and uh, you usually bring water along with you on something like that for drinking anyway, so um, your fuel source doesn't get exhausted just sitting around as long as you keep it dry, and <clears throat> you can readily mix it in here when needed. Um, when you've exhausted the calcium carbide that's in the, in, in the bottom receptacle, um, you shake it out of there, get it out of there, preferably rinse it out with water and uh, um, in a safe place and uh, and then refill it and check your water level on top and and, uh, and go from there. Anyways, I thought I'd try to spin down really quick to take a little uh, description of what's going on and um, the bottom part unscrews and we're going to have a little bit of moisture in there because I actually used this a little while ago and rinsed it out. This one's seen some uh, seen some use, but it's uh, not too bad. It smells a little funky because the chemical reaction produces uh, some gas that, uh, well, you can notice the smell. It's unique. Um, this is simply a brass holder. Some of these have a rubber ring around the base. Um, this one didn't come with one. I did have the... Uh, washer here which is a seal between the upper and, bottom, uh, upper and lower sections to keep the gas directed into this top section. This paper clip here is what I had to do to use for a, a nice basic retaining clip to hold that felt pad retainer. And this is simply a piece of towel I had around. This one didn't come with the felt pad. The felt pad is there. Uh, if you see any of the videos that show reactions, <clears throat> you'll see that they, the, the reaction of the water and the calcium carbide produces a lot of bubbles. And rather than getting bubbles to get up in here and get into the gas channel that feeds this jet, um, you have that felt there to kind of keep that from happening. The gas passes through the felt, the moisture doesn't. I'll just place that back down on there. These had little uh, butterfly wing things that usually clipped onto this water pipe because this is what the water comes down to to drip into the chamber below. Um, those wings were broken off. So I simply took a paper clip and guess what? It snaps on there. Fits in there pretty nice to retain our, our felt holder just fine. The uh, base there, we'll get back to in a second. That little wing nut. I don't know. Comes off 
there. That. This is a piece that is missing a chunk, but still works fine. This is your re reflector support. Um, there's your water receptacle or water reservoir. It was just a simply little snap fit cap in there. And this is um, your drip control. It's kind of like a throttle. It'll uh, allow you to uh, adjust your water flow. When this uh, opens up, probably can't see it too well. What it does is it actually allows this little ball to move out a little and the water that's in here can come out at a faster rate. And as this comes up, that little ball is pulled up tighter to that water tube and prevents the water from flowing out. This uh, retaining thing sits right in here. Um, I haven't seen many of these as replacements available, but I'm sure there's somewhere I can get one parts for, but this one seems to be working okay as it is. Um, pardon me. Okay. There is a index here on the back. It kind of fits right into a groove on that thing there, so that this is in the position that it should be at. Wing nut goes back on. Right, Daniel, pardon me for doing this. We'll make sure that index is correctly. This doesn't have to be super tight, just snug. These jets are sometimes clogged. I actually had a little piece of uh, stainless steel wire I was able to put in there and clean, clean this one out with. Um, it is removable. I understand there's parts that you can get to replace that if needed. But uh, we don't need one right now. This one works. What I'm going to do is... We'll wait for a second on that. There's a little moisture in here, but I'm going to place some calcium carbide rocks in here. So they're down in there. Those will probably start gassing just off the humidity that's in there, but we'll put those in there. And then uh, get a nice fit. Screw our bottom on. I'm not screwing super tight, just to make sure we got a good, good seat. Make sure that's off. I have a little water here. I'm going to pour this in off the side of the camera so I have some clearance. side. You'll see there's some water in there. Put that cap shut. I'm going to move this over a couple spots. And we should have some water flowing. This flint would be struck. Let's see if we can get that. Give a little assistance because it's a little awkward to try to run like this right there. But there we go. So our gas is being produced by that chemical reaction in the base here, the water and the calcium carbide. And as it uh, starts generating pressure, it's forced up past that felt and out through this little jet. And it produces a really nice bright white light which I can throttle down a little here by adjusting this. And it takes a couple minutes to really stable. Well, I don't know about minutes, but at least, you know, like about a minute or two. Uh, and as that pr gas production, the acetylene gas production starts building up inside the bottom, um, it does put off some heat. This little bottom thing can get pretty warm to the touch. I'm not going to say it gets burning hot to toast your hand, but it does get uncomfortable to hold if you're going to do it that way. And uh, you'll see as we increase the, the drip rate, our flame reacts because we've got more water reacting with more calcium carbide in there and the flame gets brighter. It takes a second to do it, but we'll turn that back down. And uh, 
I'm told that a lot of the miners, because of this it was so bright, wouldn't really polish these up too well um, because it was kind of glaring when you pointed your head at somebody else and you really just needed to light your light space without uh, messing up everybody's vision in the dark. Um, anyways, so that is an auto light, brass, carbide, calcium, miner's lantern or lamp. This little hook here would clip on to, uh, to their helmets. Some of them have a little flat tongue looking piece and that actually seems to be the, the, the more ideal situation for uh, a lot of the later helmets that just have a little slotted spot for that tab to fit in. I haven't seen which helmets this one fits, but, um, but this is a really cool little lamp, lamp and I thought, uh, thought I'd share it with y'all and I'd be able to share this video with the person who's, uh, who's getting this lantern for me. I think they're really going to enjoy it. And uh, there you go, see that? Oh, it reacts pretty quick to that water rate drop. And uh, I guess if you're in a cold mine, it would also be nice to be able to say, hey, i got something to warm my hands over because that, uh, that generates a, a little bit of heat there too. Anyways, that pretty much covers it. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm by no means a pro on these. I just got this one cleaned up and working and uh, thought it was a really cool little gadget. So, all right. Well, we're going to check out here now and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.